Hey, Bernie. Bernie! 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 So we have tried to create the Mishima environment here in the panel room, so we're going to see how well this works out. Basically, we're going to have a director for you, as well as soundtrack, or audition. So the director feed and the PC? We're actually outputting through PC, and then we're using here, I can show you. Yeah. Let me just give you this other player. This is great. Oh, no. So here's we're gonna we're gonna work on the fly here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna try to demonstrate the efficiency of machinima versus traditional animation. Um, how many of you are familiar with what machinima is? So you love you. Yeah. For those of you who are not, it is the original five seasons, really seven seasons of Red vs. Blue, were all machinima, pure machinima, which is we would take the video game Halo and we would use it to make the comedic shorts Red vs. Blue. And essentially, it's a very efficient method of animation that is a lot like live action filmmaking. With traditional animation, you know, you take the you take the scripts and you plot everything out, and you your storyboards, you cell shading, and then it takes a team of animators like six months to make something that's five minutes long. But with Mashima, it's more like live action, where you have a camera and you set it up and control it in real time, much like you'd have a camera in the real world and you do pans, and tilts, and everything else. Um, and you have the actors working in real time as well. They're doing rehearsals. They're trying to do takes, like they try to hit a mark and things like that. You don't try to hit a mark in animation. You just plot the character to that point. They go to that point, and that's it. And you can change it. So everything that we've done so far with Red vs. Blue has a, a really strong performance uh, aspect to it. So everything you see is an actual live performance, but then that's been recorded and edited. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to show you how efficient this is by making anywhere between 20 and 30 seconds of machinima just from scratch in an hour. So if you think about that, a team of animators like a Pixar or something like that, to make 20 or 30 seconds from scratch, they would not be able to do that in a panel. Um, so we're gonna give it a shot and see if we can do it. We, this is <laughs> so Miles Luna is uh, also uh, one of our writers. Uh, he does concentrate primarily on the Blood Bills characters. Yes. Uh, writes some of our PSAs and then they start fleshing out uh, some of the scenes in season 10 as well. He wrote most of what you're going to see in episode 6 of Shinema coming out this Monday. This is Carrie Shawcross, you're the mm -hmm. right hand man, basically. Uh, Dragon oh. Dragon Carrie is like the Mr. Everything on a regular school. Works on Machinima, uh, carried most of the load, I think, uh, carried most of the load for Machinima in season 8. Uh, and then also works heavily on a lot of animation uh, in season 10 as well. In fact, he was the character designer uh, for Sigma, Elijah Wood's character. So, and his brain of farm he works at Kung He's setting us up, he's going to help us. So, we have to be Okay, great. So, the first thing we can do very quickly here is we have to write a scene. So, let's. With Red vs. Blue, it's always great to start with some kind of scenario. If somebody had like a scenario to pitch out. Something. And Church says, he always says, whenever he says anything, our Church says, shut up, Bruce. <laughs> Can we give Shirk, can we give the uh, Sarge the wrong gun too? Why don't we give the solo? Yeah, answer? sure. Yeah, Sarge says, and what the hell happened to my gun? John, did you take it? I think you're not my Hey! hey no, I That's a one page. So one page typically is about one minute in a normal script. For Red vs. Blue, 
one page equals about 37. So this is our short scene. And Joel, we're going to record Joel here, and then we're going to filter him here, and then we're going to edit this all together. So, Carrie, to stay efficient, Carrie, we need you to set up a profile for Sarge that has a non Mark 6 helmet and has an assault rifle, and then we need to lose Joel. Right, you got it. Yeah. Got it. Good to go. And why don't we set him up on Valhalla? Or, sorry, on uh, Forge World. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we yeah. have yeah. reach. So, yeah. we're going to set him on Forge World. I'm glad you said that, because that's where they are. Great. Right. <laughs> Joel, do you want to sit down recording your food one? Yes. Well, okay. why do you sound filtered already? Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. No, we don't need that too much. Here's a back about Halo Reach. Does anybody have to know off the top of their head the button combination to lower your weapon in Halo Reach? Well, I saw you personally know it. Yeah. Uh, it's anybody the bumper. Yeah. It's the bumper, and then you press X and B at the same time, and then down the D pad. And then you do. You, you, it's actually, um, you, you press down on, let me make sure I'm doing this right, no, I'm doing that. it's a uh, left stick, right stick, X, B, down on the D-pad, and, yep. It's always yep. So, what they're talking awesome. about is in the game of Halo, otherwise our characters would evolve. It goes to show how, you know, Red versus Blue was something that came out of advanced space, but Bungie just kind of embraced it and made sure that, that people could make movies using the game. Because, I mean, in, in my opinion, you know, Machinima is just another way to play, you know, it's just another way to use the game to do something fun and creative. That doesn't end with people dying. Unless he loses in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Joe, you ready to record your lines? Ready. Where's, Where's the script? Up there. Uh, Alright, Joe, do you want to record your lines? Yeah. Alright, Joe, do you want to record your lines? Yeah. Alright, Joe, do you want to record your lines? Alright, Joe, do you want to record your lines? Alright, Joe, <laughs> so step one, you the sound. I think your helmet looks fine. Also, I think I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> really, really loud in the back. Well, I think your helmet looks fine. Hey, also, you're And now your second line is, uh, except you've never hit anything. He's talking about the sniper rifles. Uh, Church says, uh, I, what do you mean? I, I would never use that. I use a sniper rifle. It's an elegant weapon of precision. How about the question? Then why don't you ever hit anything? Yeah, I think you never hit anything. <laughs> 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 Are you aiming at me on the top? <laughs> 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 and also, we're just do all the Yeah, we, we're done. That was all. That, that was 100% clues. All right, well, let's look. Let's sure. Let's go through the filter. So, the great thing about Joel is that. Joel adds so much to the just via his ad list. Being on the top. And by interrupting. <laughs> and then the, we, what we do is we take the audio here. Why don't you show, can you put the voice filter on and show the difference between the two of them? So, let's try to find What do you see a little clip? Except for me. Are you aiming at me on the top? <laughs> so, like, that's a. Meet the live studio audience in some stuff. So, we're going to now. Every time Kaboos comes on screen, you just see like. Like Kramer. Wait, I got it. Yeah. Or his favorite song. You're going to go to effects or filters or whatever it's called. The filter that we use for Red Hey, test it. The filter that we use for Red vs. Blue is actually based on a speakerphone that I had on my desk from season one. And the way we would record Gus, who lived in Puerto Rico at the time, is I would put him on speakerphone and I would take our microphone and mic it like this. Oh, well, is that why his voice sounds? Um... Then bought by Adobe, so we always had to have a PC around that had Adobe Audition because we couldn't get the filters any other way. We could never get them exactly the same way. And so it survived to you know season 10 at this point. The freelancers are a little different. Uh, we use a slightly different filter for them, just because when they take off their helmets, they would sound so dramatically different. <laughs> but Joel does, Joel does a ton of ad-libbing against Caboose. Uh, all the actors do. Matt also is going to be here. It's like, Matt is actually kind of a nightmare to put in something like this, because there's been times where Matt is given a two-page script, and you get back a 45-minute raw audio file. <laughs> <laughs> just like, flip-flaring, nerding, and he'll sing a song in there and everything else. <laughs> 
Joel, Joel, Joel is the king of the ad lib. In fact, the the most as a writer, it sometimes it makes you feel insulted when the actors change it too much. And I, I said to Joel one time, because he records on his own now a lot of times, because you know he doesn't need any direction. He's played the character for so long. I said, Joel, um, I really you know kind of have to have the way it is in the script at least one pass like that. And he was like, I got the gist of it. And I said, well, yeah. I go like this line right here. I guess you know, oh, I added it. I go, yeah, but the line was yes. You added it, no. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of messes up the intention. It's fun to sometimes change plot points around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's a great thing about machine. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, uh, I said to him, I said, yeah, that kind of changes the intention of the scene entirely. He goes, what? It's funny. <laughs>unfortunately it wasn't finished in the panel but it was very cool to see how it was done um i just my eyes are totally open now so i'm gonna start making some machinima for my channel and i'm almost done with one currently so it'll be out later this week so stay tuned for that guys so rtx was amazing and rate comment and subscribe for more luminosity